Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. And I'm Shelby, your co-host. Let's cure for seeing and get underway. Success in a home business cannot just be achieved by building and delivering a better mousetrap. Entrepreneurs are under constant pressure, pressure and stress, and that can get in the way of achieving your business goals. Having a mastery of one's emotions under pressure can mean the difference between a home business owner's epic success or miserable failure. Today's podcast guest, Joey Klein, is one of the world's leading experts in how you can better master your emotions for increased success. So greetings, Joey Klein. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Say hello to our audience. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thanks Absolutely. for connecting in from uh, the wonderful, beautiful, vibrant, I don't know if it's still a white state with the snow melting off, but Colorado? Yeah, Colorado. We're in springtime. All the trees are just just getting to bud. And uh, yeah, yeah, all the things are starting to wake up. So that's always a fun time of year. You see a little, a little white snow on the mountain still, or is it pretty much all just uh, going away? Yeah, definitely on the on the on the tops. There's definitely still some snow. We're we're officially moving into mud season. Actually, some of those ski resorts are open still this year. A little bit late because we had a okay. we had a decent snow at the end. So, depending on where you go, if you want to go seek it out, you can find the snow up there. Still yeah, a I lot mean, of skiers be... there. Yeah, few skiers. Yeah, yeah okay. they're definitely like getting their last little runs in for the season. Yeah. I stay away from it this time of year. I like my knees too much. It gets a little bit, a little bit slushy here and there. So I'm like, That's you know fair. what? Let, let the tours have it. And I'm going to get to hiking and mountain biking. That's got to exactly. be inspirational looking it. out your window and seeing mountains, though. For sure. I, I bought my house for the view. I was like, you know what? I can remodel the house, but you can't change the view. Yeah, you're right about that. Location, location, location. I think they, they say about uh, real estate. Well, let's, before we get started, let's see a copy of your book, The Inner Matrix. Sure thing. Here it is. All right. I'll slide right. a little bit. There we go. Just slide a little bit to your right side of your face there. Look, there hey, there we go. go. Cool. There we go. We got to yeah. get those nice visuals right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Well, Joey Klein, let's get to know you better. How did you get into the world of helping people in personal mastery and development? So for me, my, my journey was very accidental. I know a lot of people today, they mm -hmm. want to be coaches or, you know, things of that nature. They're very excited mm -hmm. about it. Um, and for me, really pain was my, was my ticket to kind of do what I'm doing today. A lot of pain, a lot of suffering. I was in a real bad place in my life. And I, I remember I woke up at around 3 a.m. in the morning, um, I was partying. I was just completely out of control. And I said, man, I, I'm going to be dead in a year if I keep doing what I'm doing. And so sure. I started seeking personal development things like, you know, I traveled all over the world studying, you know, throughout India and Thailand, throughout Japan, um, you know, modern day neurologist. I studied with psychologists, like anything that had to do with personal development. I was really seeking it out because I wanted to understand like, what's the key to knowing a sense of just peace and fulfillment in one's life? Because I definitely, you know, didn't have any of that available to me. I essentially kind of found what I was looking for. And I got a lot of people asking me like, what are you doing? There's some big difference ha happening for you. And my, my mentors actually took notice that I just naturally was sort of giving a lot of people some advice and coaching and, and consulting. And they said, you know, you really should maybe charge for this and start, start doing it as a profession. And so that's really how I got started. And I just started working with people one-on-one -on -one before I knew it. I was living in LA. I had about 80, 80 plus people, one-on-one -on -one okay. clients and, uh, you know, every month. And then they wanted me to like, like help out their, their colleagues or their friends and, and family members. And I ended up with like 200 people on a wait list. So then I started teaching weekend seminars inside of what I was coaching people inside of. Uh, that led to 40 weekends a year, which I, which I still conduct today. Um, and ultimately the business, uh, the business that we're up to, and we've served now over 80,000 people through our seminars and coaching. So not wow. something I sat out to do. It just kind of was like one step made sense and led to the next. And next thing you know, here we are. So it all started with, uh, It all started with a, what, a 4 a.m. wake up call? <laughs> That's it. The, the 3, 3 a.m. panic call is really what it was. It was and, like, uh, what am I doing and why am I doing this crazy stuff I am up to? I like what you were saying that, uh, you know, your, your best friends and acquaintances started noticing there was a change. And uh, yeah. that kind of what got you down the road to this, got some good feedback and said, and uh, just kind of followed the, uh, 
the good feedback you were getting and see, see where it took you? Yeah, that's, that's really where it started. Like my friends and family members started noticing and, and you know, they were, they were like, you know, what, what are you doing? And I started just sharing the things I was up to. It made a difference for them. And then they started, you know, sending me people that they knew. And I wasn't doing it as any business. I was just kind of doing it because it was my passion, right? I just right. kind of got, got obsessed about this idea of human development and human performance and, and, and how it all works, right? And um, eventually that led to some really high profile clients in, in LA. Mm-hmm. I, I had a psychologist out there who, who moved me out to LA, who talked me into moving out there to work with her high profile clients. And they were a lot of like pro athletes and, you know, movie, uh, famous movie actors and actresses and, you know, uh, you know, movie producers, executives at Sony industries, things like this. And, and all of a sudden I found out that, you know, there's a lot of high performing people out there who are losing their mind because they are so stressed <laughs> and so overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. they, don't, they don't know how to manage their reality. And I could come in and because of the training and this unique education that I had, you know, the stress and like emotional management piece was just second nature for me. Um, and so I found, I just kind of stumbled upon a niche there uh, and, and was able to really you know, like provide LA a, a lot of a help huge, to people. It would be a huge niche for this market demand. Oh, so absolutely. That, that's a kind of interesting way to get started. But Joey, you know that each of us has our own inner matrix. Talk with us a little bit about the inner matrix we all possess. Yeah. So inner matrix, essentially, you know, through the studies that I was up to, you know, each of us has this unique set of emotion and thought strategies that drive at an unconscious level, you know, every choice, every decision and every action that we take. And a lot of us, right, we try to change our life by way of changing our actions. If we want to get healthier, we try to eat better. If we want to, you know, get get fit, we try to get ourselves to go to the gym. Um, if we want to perform better in our career, we have these things that we think we need to get ourselves to do, more sales calls or whatever that might be. And even though we know we need to do it or we should do it, um, it usually breaks down in being able to motivate ourselves to consistent action as life happens. And so if you understand the fundamentals of how to train your inner matrix and really align that not just with the action you want to take, but the outcome that that action is going to essentially, you know, provide you. Um, it really is second nature. You train the inner aspect, emotion, mind, thought strategy, and, and then all of a sudden actions occur and you don't have to force yourself to do this stuff. It just occurs as the thing I need to do. Um, and then ultimately that translates to a result. So it's, it's kind of a, a complicated process you got to go through and the matrix puts it together so that you're, you, um, you're working with the right outputs then. Yeah, it seems like it can be intricate and complicated, but if we were to simple it down, right, just make it very simple, uh, you know, it's like any, any of us can relate to, you know, making some bad decisions in our life, right, or doing some things we regret. And if we really look at the core of what was there when we did that, like as an example, a common one is we get angry, right, or we feel frustrated. And, and then we, you know, we write that email to our boss or, or, we, or we, you know, speak to a customer in a particular way. And then all of a sudden it has an impact. Now, once we calm down and let's say we're not angry anymore, we're not looking at the world through that lens and we feel, you know, at peace or we feel, you know, a bit, bit optimistic again. And then we look back at that email we sent, or we look back at how we might've treated a customer or a colleague. All of a sudden we experience that healthy regret, right? Or like healthy yep. guilt and shame. And we go, oh, man, I, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like, oh man, like I hope I have a job tomorrow after I sent that email. And so if we can, you know, catch ourselves when we're in those, you know, uh, unbeneficial, you know, uh, uh, emotional states that drive us to do things that we regret and, and avoid from taking action and even better yet, train our nervous system so that it just doesn't show up very often, regardless of the intensity of the environment, you know, that is a big key to performing. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So Joey, so I understand that mastering your inner matrix system starts with being more aware of your emotions. You kind of touched on this, but like, how do we build upon this awareness before it gets like too out of hand? Yeah. For, first steps are like anything else, right? We got to build sensitivity and, and it's as simple as just, you know, checking into where we are. And although it sounds obvious and simple, right? I, I often will train a high performer, like an executive at a fortune 100 or 500 company and, you know, they'll be, they'll be obviously frustrated about something that's going on in the company or, you know, a supply chain issue is a big deal right now, right? Or something like this. And, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're obviously frustrated or they're obviously angry or, or sometimes literally in a rage, like they're yelling at me over the phone about, you know, the circumstances mm-hmm. that are going on. And I'll just ask them a question. I'll go, how are you feeling right now? And they go, what do you mean? I'm not <laughs> yeah. like, I just need to get this stuff done. Here are the things that need to happen, Joey. And I go, I hear those are the things that need to happen. 
but what emotion, what feeling are you inside of right now? Like, how do you feel? And, and we usually, even though we're in the experience of that and it's driving our choices, our decisions, our actions, a lot of us, we haven't built that sensitivity. It's a skill, it's a talent that we need to develop. So the beginning stage of this is really as simple as just ta- stopping, taking a moment and really tuning in. Like, like how am I feeling? Do I, I feel keep scared? hearing this term you're feel saying contracted, of sensit- sensitivity. That sensitivity yeah. is very important. That's it. Sensitivity, right? It's like, you know, we can, we can feel angry and have no idea that we're there, right? A big epidemic right now is, you know, executives literally are, are dropping dead in the middle of meetings because they're having a heart attack or a stroke. Sure, that, sure. Is, that is being very insensitive to the level of stress that the body, the nervous system is under for a long period of time before we get to those places. And stress is really an unhealthy emotion that we get stuck in you know, like Mm -hmm. anger, like sadness, like unworthiness, like overwhelm. And if we're sensitive Mm -hmm. to it, if we know that we're feeling it, then we can look to do something about it. But if we don't even know Mm -hmm. it's happening, then then we're in big trouble. Imagine, imagine stress is one of the tougher ones to be aware of. You know, you're in it creeps up on you. No, it creeps up on you. One day, all of a sudden, you're just feeling fatigued, burnt out. I think everyone in corporate America has felt this. It really creeps up on you, comes out of nowhere. And so I kind of my my question is, yeah, what is your advice? Because it's such a hustle culture nowadays. Like with people in corporate, everyone's part-time jobs and everything. Like what if someone's unable to like have like a better work-life balance? Do you have any like tips and tricks like what you can do throughout the day to kind of- Yeah, I, I think there's two things, right? This whole idea of work-life balance. I think, I think yeah. number one, we got to throw the idea of balance away. Right? Yeah. As I tell yeah. people like, like there's never going to be equal pieces of the pie where you got like, like 20% going to work and 20% to yourself and 20% mm-hmm. to career or whatever. And then all of a sudden this equals out. Um, but the expectation that it should, I think causes a lot of stress in itself. Yes. So I think a better, yes. better question to ask is, Hey, what's the outcome that I want to produce? And where does my focus need to be right now? Where's my priority need to be to produce that outcome? So, so I think defining reality first is, is really the first step to eliminating stress so that we don't feel guilty for not doing these other things that we think we should be doing. If we understand our priority and the outcome we're looking to get, focusing there and being confident in it does a lot for alleviating stress right away. Yeah. Then the <laughs> second component is, you know, it, less is more. Like if people stop and, and, you know, create a little bit of time to, to align themselves, right. To, to take a few deep breaths and really think about what's the outcome I want to get. What's the most important thing for me to do. We can literally get more done by doing less, but we often don't realize that because we're just trying to get everything done. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I had a, just kind of a joke saying in the military that if, all the components of your life hate you, hate you equally. <laughs> that means you've got it in balance because there's just <laughs> there's no way you're going to please everybody, and you just got to balance mm-hmm. it the best you can. But mm-hmm. you know, you know, you talk about leveraging your thoughts after gaining awareness of your emotion. Leveraging your thoughts. Can you talk with us a little bit more about this leverage? Yeah. So, so much about performance, you know, has to do with perception. And if you look at like a pro athlete, right, there's, there's so much known about like visualizing the way you want to execute, right? Like every pro athlete in the world is trained inside of some visualization practice in terms of seeing how they want to execute. Right. And, you know, you take that out of sports. We don't, you know, the average person doesn't do that on a regular basis throughout their day, right? Like there's so much value that can happen if we just wake up and, and sort of name two things like number one, hey, what is, the, what is the thing that I want to achieve today? How do I want to perform today? And that might be how I want to treat people or some things that you're looking to get accomplished or an impact that you want to have. And by doing nothing more than getting clear on like, here's my job today. Here's what I'm going to achieve today. Well, now our focus is going there. Our thoughts are directed in the direction of, of the thing that we want to achieve. And then the other piece around thought management is, well, how do I want to achieve that? Because by doing nothing more than, than starting to name, hey, I want to do this with inspiration, right? I'd like to do this day, you know, feeling a bit calm or, you know, we, the flow state is a big thing right now. Like, hey, I want to just setting the intention, I'm going to do it in a flow state, you know, keeps us from, you know, driving from anxiety, panic, overwhelm, fear, et cetera, mm-hmm. simply because we're focused on the way we want to execute. And so starting to really direct the mind in a way that we're literally just focused on what we want to do and how we want to perform goes a long way for, for making sure we perform that way. So the kind of the leverage gets you ready on a day-to-day basis for the actions you need to take. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like take two minutes and just go like, here's how I'm going to do today. 
And if we mm-hmm. don't take those two minutes, then we just kind of drive inside of whatever we wake up to. And the average human being today, like we wake up stressed, right? The average oh, yeah. person <laughs> within three minutes of waking looks at their cell phone is the statistic. And, and yeah, so like, what, what email do you happen to see there? What, what, what comes up on your Facebook feed? And now mm-hmm. all of a sudden, most people are starting their day in some kind of stress state, anxiety, overwhelm, fear, uncertainty, mm-hmm. sadness, like some concern or whatever it might be, right? And so mm-hmm. instead of that, if we take the first two minutes of the day and go, number one, here's what I want to accomplish, here's what I want to fulfill. And then number two, here's the space I want to fulfill it from. Now, all of a sudden, we're like, we're starting the day off in a different way. We're not on autopilot anymore. We're starting mm-hmm. to sort of steer the ship, so to speak. I remember someone exactly. said something about, you know, You've got some inner peace in the morning before your mind starts chattering. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Keep that inner peace and and try to Mm -hmm. work from there. No, it's as simple as like, honestly, like before I start the work day, just go for a walk, stretch, just take deep breaths. Don't look at your phone for two minutes. It completely changes the course of the day. I have a question. So I guess, Joe, you seem very busy, you know, like managing the business and all your clients. How do you like center yourself then? Like, I guess like, what are some things you do to center yourself before your busy work day? Yeah. So I definitely, I have a, I have a very full life and I love it yeah. that way. Right. That because cause I've been on the other side of it. Like I have nothing to do and that that's a, that's a challenge. You, you know, you right? seem so calm though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, full day. I, I put in regular 12 hour days, not because I have to, sure. because I love to, right? Absolutely. And, and so, you know, I really focus on, again, like, like what we were just speaking about, like a few key things. Like, like number one, it's really about when I think of as nervous system management. And so when we, you know, get into these, I think of them as amp states, right? You know, stress, fear, overwhelm, all the things we're talking about right now. From a neurological perspective, a little bit of geeky science, we're we're in a you know overstimulated sympathetic response. And what happens there when our fight and flight mechanisms turn on? Well, we don't we can't critically think. We don't have access to creative thinking, right? We don't have access to our intuition, which is so critical for success and so critical for well-being. And so if we learn to literally do something as simple as like just stop and take a moment and take those few deep breaths that we all know we, we could be taking, but then take it a next step and really be clear, hey, what am I going to fulfill today? What place am I going to fulfill it from? And, and, we, and we give the system a minute to sort of relax. Well, then the parasympathetic part of the brain turns on, which is that part right behind the prefrontal cortex, you know, lights up right behind your forehead. And why that's important is because now we can critically think. We, can, we have access to creative thinking and, again, intuition. And, and what I mean by nervous system management, the more consistently we allow ourselves to be anxious or overwhelmed, and we don't know how to relax the nervous system and, and get that parasympathetic response happening, well, then we get better at feeling stress. The brain gets mm-hmm. better at and quicker to anger or resentment or overwhelm or whatever those feelings might be. And when we spend more time in that parasympathetic response, it really does become our natural state, right? It becomes mm-hmm. more available to us because we literally teach the nervous system to function from that space. And if yeah. you look at the highest performers in the world, whether they, they trained that through a system like what I teach, right? Like step-by-step process, kind of like going to the gym, or, or they just found a way to do it, you know, on accident, they're absolutely good at, you know, finding that state or whatever or a lot of people call the zone um, and doing it on a regular basis and on demand, which is why they're able to perform the way in which they do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, that it is so fascinating how the brain and the stress all works together. It, it is fascinating. So Joe, your inner matrix system is designed to then drive actions that produce the results you want. If you can, can you expand on this angle some more? Yeah. So if we were to break down any human behavior, right, you sit down at a restaurant and you order fish or you order, you know, a cheeseburger or yeah. you go into your pantry, right? And you're going to have ice cream or, you know, you're going to eat, eat, eat carrot sticks, right? It's like literally every decision, the person that you're going to date, the person you're going to marry. If we break down how we make decisions, number one, an emotion gets stimulated. Step two, thoughts start thinking in the mind. Step three, we have sensations in the body. And then step four, we, we take action. And so, so many people, they, they try to modify action and results at the action level, right? 
picking the new food to eat or trying to be interested in somebody else that they're not yet attracted to, or, you know, whatever it might be, right. Get themselves to pick up the phone and make those sales calls instead of, you know, procrastinating by way of whatever they're up to. And so if we look at what's the thing driving decision, it was always emotion, like emotion started first, even if we're rational people, even individuals that think they're very rational, emotion is driving the mind. It's just how the nervous system works. So if we get good at going, hey, what I want to do is I want to be able to make those sales calls as an example. I want to be able to get myself to go to the gym and we go, okay, well, what do I need to do to do that, right? A person who works out all the time, they identify themselves as in shape. They identify themselves as an athlete. And so inherently they tie joy, inspiration, or some love-based state or positive emotion to going to the gym. If they're not going to the gym, it's because they've tied some kind of painful state to going to the gym. The emotion that shows up when they think about that is a sense of you know, unworthiness or shame or guilt because they don't look like everybody else at the gym or you know, a sense of like, like there's, a, there's some childhood memory that they don't even know is there where they got made fun of like literally in gym class, right? And so they've decided that they're more of an intellectual person. And so if we look at like, well, why does this person go to the gym every day and why does this person not? You can always break it down if you know how to an, a core emotion that's driving the behavior. If you know how to change that core emotion, well, now you can drive any behavior that you choose. I mean, imagine the power in being able to say to yourself, I'm going to do X starting tomorrow and I'm going to do it for the next year and not miss a day. Like, like a person can completely redefine their life this way. So I guess it, it's kind of safe to assume that people have to think and concentrate on a positive outcome. And if you're not giving it thought, maybe it drifts into being a negative outcome that you attach to something good just because um, you have to train your mind that way. Possible, right? I think that what happens is, you know, we, we hear that phrase sometimes, if you read some self-help books, neurons that fire together, wire together. And so the way that, that our nervous system puts things together is essentially, hey, I'm feeling a certain way while something happens. And then those two things get linked, right? So like, let, let's imagine a breakup. Let's say you're, 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 you're profoundly in love with somebody and then they tell you they want to break up and they're going to you know, go be with somebody else. Well, now all of a sudden what can happen in that moment is you feel betrayal, you feel, you feel sad, and then it ties it to this idea of, of romantic relationship. And now moving forward, it's like you have this resistance to, to dating and you're not even sure why that happened. Well, it's because literally the thought of dating or the thought of being in a romantic relationship activates within our unconscious self or our emotional self, that sense of like betrayal or being hurt. Or let's say we were performing really well in our career and all of a sudden somebody, you know, told us, you know, hey man, I'm sorry, I got to let you go. I got to fire you. You're not doing so good. And, and we feel, you know, like a failure in that moment. And, and it just so happens to get tied to our career or our business, right? And so all of a sudden, every time we want to take action in our business, we feel a sense of failure. We, we feel a sense of overwhelm. We feel a sense of insecurity. And if every time you need to take action in your business to make it grow, you're feeling insecure, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like a failure, you're going to avoid those actions because you're trying to avoid the emotion, right? You're trying to avoid those feelings. And now all of a sudden we have to go get a job as opposed to our business succeeding or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can tie inspiration to the things we need to do in our business, if we can tie confidence and we know how to train that, we know how to wire that so that every time you take an action within your business, you literally are feeling those, those positive reinforcements, right? Those positive affirmations inside. You can do that forever now. So you're, you're in control of these thought, you know, what you attach to say that's happened on a negative outcome, but you're still in charge of the, of the image and the thoughts you have to that, and that you can change that to something I positive. Would, yeah. I would say that, that, that with training, we can influence and control our emotions and our thoughts to become our greatest ally without training a human being's emotions and thoughts tend to be their greatest enemy. And it is mm -hmm. the thing that's consistently getting in the way of what they want to achieve. And they don't even realize that it's happening. Yeah. It's, it's easier to be negative than positive. It's a lot harder to train your brain to think of things positively if you're in more of like a negative state. So Shelby, you're always yeah. telling me I'm too negative on things. Is that true? Do I need to I have that? been telling you that for a while. <laughs> yeah. I think you need to read the book a few times. I, I got to read the inner matrix. Well, um, Joe, you know, just, hit this point once more, you know, you, mastering these emotions seems to be central to, you know, driving these right actions. Do you have any final uh, thoughts on this concept of mastering, um, mastering emotions to drive the right, drive the right actions? 
What I would say is if, if it seems like a mystery to, to you, right? I think emotions and, and, and managing thought is a mystery to most people. Like, how do we do that? What does that even mean? But for me, I was a, I was a martial artist. I was a competitive martial artist for, for much of my life. And in martial arts, you've got a system. Like you show up and they, they teach you these, these basic stances. They teach you how to punch. They teach you how to kick. And, and there's a system that you follow to, to learn how to, you know, get in a ring and, and, and fight, right? Get in the ring and compete. Um, and it really is straightforward. Like everybody goes through the same system. And so for me, in like our internal realities, training emotion, training thought, training how that ties to behavior and results that we want to get. If we understand how that works, it really is just a system that you have to follow. You just have to kind of do step one, get good at this, step two, get good at that. Just like going to the gym, just like with the trainer. And so whether it's my system, right? If you want to check that out or some other system out there, you know, really look for, you know, a system of training that's going to support you to manage emotion and thought is, is in my opinion, the, the most important number one thing you can do in terms of creating success, not only in your business, you know, but, but life in general, in your relationships with your marriage, you know, with your health and so on and so forth, because emotion and mind is really driving every action. So if we don't know how to manage those components, it's really hard to get ourselves to do the things that we know we could be doing. You've got mm -hmm. to have some kind of a system and you've got to give it some thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So Joey, overall, you built a thriving worldwide business model using the inner matrix system principles. Talk with our listeners just a bit more about your business. Yeah, so basically Intermatrix Systems is, uh, is a company that's, that's been designed for, for high achievers uh, mm -hmm. to really train them inside of the, the art and science of personal mastery. And we really look at a high achiever as somebody that wants to, you know, better some circumstance of their life and they're, they're willing to take action toward that. And we really focus on, on, on training people from the inside out. And so we've got a, a proprietary training system that really does train people. How do you design and create the emotions that you want to experience day after day? How do you leverage those emotions to, to create the thought strategies that are ultimately going to align you with success, the right principles, the right belief structure, et cetera? And then how do we harness that energy and focus it on the right actions that if we take that over time, it's going to produce the results that, that many of us aspire to, whether that's harmonious, connected relationships, so, you know, money, success, et cetera. You've, you've developed a system. I imagine you work with a network of people who are what, what trained in... in what you, how your approach to then um, assist clients? I have a second yes. part of this question, actually. Do you also work with college students, high school students, or is it mostly people like in the um, yeah, corporate world or working world? Yeah, absolutely. So as of, as of right now, we've had over 80,000 people go through our, our, our curriculum, our trainings, our programs. Oh, wow. And I've, I've certified, I've trained, you know, a little over 30 people right now um, inside of being able to conduct this, you know, on behalf of others. Now, in terms of who we serve, our, our programs, uh, in terms of our like weekend-based seminars or our classes that we teach, et cetera, you know, people, every, everybody from middle school, you know, all the way okay. up to, you know, Harvard graduates, you know, engage mm -hmm. our curriculum, um, stay-at-home mom and dads, you know, okay. to, to literally everything else in between, right? Pro athletes uh, engage our curriculum, et cetera. My focus, my personal focus is really on business owners, entrepreneurs, and, and top mm -hmm. executives are the sure. people that I personally coach to Day just because that's that's what I love doing, and I'll take on an occasional pro athlete, something like this. Um, but in terms of our curriculum and the company and who it serves, um, literally because we're we're kind of training life techniques, if you will, um, we we serve the entire gamut. Do you kind of mm -hmm. get around the world, or are there more United? I know you've got some LA clients, <laughs> but do you manage to tap into a worldwide audience? Is it more um, US? Based. We do. Uh, people from all over the world engage our training. Uh, I personally mm -hmm. used to travel extensively through Japan, Europe, Canada, United States. Um, I just, I just kind of got tired of international travel. Um, and so mm -hmm. I really focus most of my efforts uh, today on the United States, but occasionally I'll do an international thing here or there. Uh, but with technology and media the way it is today, and I have trainers in different parts of the world, the, the work mm -hmm. and the system is definitely engaged by people all over. You know, the don't United want to leave those States mountains either. Right, right. <laughs> hey, the United States needs this the most. We don't have work life balance. We we don't incorporate this so much much into corporate America. So we got a lot of work yeah. to do. Well, Joey, you've also yeah. packaged your system into a book, The Inner Matrix, leveraging the art and science of personal mastery to create that real life results. How do you how do you like being an author? 
You, you, you know, I, the, I, I said growing up, I, I never wanted to do a few key things, right? I remember in high school, I was like, I never want to, I never want to write. I don't want to be an author. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to act. And I don't want to talk in public. And I, I used to think like, what career can I That's do? That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Where I don't have to like act. I don't have to talk in public. I don't yeah. have to write. And so I do those things as my living today, right? And yep. I find the greatest fulfillment <laughs> out of them, which is kind of funny. But, but really, I wrote the book because, you know, as I said, I teach 40 weekend seminars, you know, every year uh, sure. for the last 20 years or so is, is what I've been doing this now. And, you know, people, you know, were coming to my seminars and, and they basically said, listen, I got my, I got this friend, I got this family member. Hey, my staff can't all take off work and come to these weekends. Like, what can we do to give them access? So I spent five years basically taking the best of what we do in our programs and our trainings, um, basically real life research and development, things that, that consistently get the results over and over again. And I spent five years compiling that into the book, The Inner Matrix, you know, really just to give people access as much as, as, as possible. I just find just talking to people, books are challenging. Did you get you know, somebody to help you put it all together? Or just, uh, I mean, I had, I had a it. variety of different mentors help me out because I am, I am not a mentor. Uh, I am not a, I'm not a, an author. I'm not a, I'm not a great writer. Um, so I definitely hired a team of people to help me here and there along the way with copywriting and, 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 you know, structuring it and things like that. But really what I focused on, what was most important to me was a few key things. Number one, I wanted people to read the book and, and give them access to seeing life differently just by re- reading the book. Number two, mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure the tools and the strategies, the techniques were in the book that people could apply, whether I ever meet them or, or not, and can see real differences in their life. So it became like a training manual, like an actual training how-to manual. And then number three, I wanted, I wanted evidence in the book. And so we've got like stories in there, you know, of athletes and, you know, entrepreneurs and stay-at-home mom and dads and, you know, people that leverage the work and, and, and what their before and after stories look like just to show like, hey, this stuff actually works. It gets results time and time again. You just got to be willing to follow, follow the system. Yeah, it mm-hmm. seems like a natural. Anybody who's moving through, the, through your program would need to get the book. So uh, it's a great it's first step. Topic. It's an awesome way to, to understand all the things that we do and all the sciences in there kind of backing it up. If you're a science geek like myself, like, like why is this stuff working? So we kind mm-hmm. of take the, the etheric out of it a little bit. Like I think when it comes to internal training or the idea of controlling emotion or training emotion, the idea of, of leveraging thought and what does that really mean? You know, how, they, like, how do we calm ourselves down? What is meditation really? What is mindfulness? You know, there's still a lot of interesting ideas about what that is. So I like to just break it down, make it very practical, you know, put the science behind it, help us understand why this stuff is as effective as it is. And then I find that gives us permission to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, Joey Klein, this has been a great discussion on the inner matrix and gaining personal mastery. Do you have any final points you'd like to share with uh, the audience? Just want people to live their best lives. If I can be a support, absolutely here to do that. And, you know, do it a little better every day. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, uh, Joey Klein, thanks for joining us today on the Home Business Podcast. We like to kind of leave everybody, after listening to you, leave everybody with one thought. I think the thought tomorrow is um, you need to get some kind of a system in place to Mm -hmm. uh, manage those emotions and drive the right, right results. So wake up tomorrow morning and uh, mm-hmm. start taking some steps. I think a good stop would be uh, to, to your website to help start driving that process. Mm-hmm. Thanks definitely. for joining us again. Sure thing. It's great being here, guys. Yeah, thank you. No, definitely you got to start today. So to learn more about Joey Klein, his book, The Inner Matrix, and his personal mastery system, please visit theinnermatrix.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, homebusinessmag.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Read our book, The Home-Based Business Startup Guide. For more info, visit homebusinessmag.com or homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kapmanderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then. Make it a great home-based biz day.